Okay, I have to say, when it comes to war, politics, and religion, there is no greater good or righter side. There really isn't. And after watching this episode, I was told that the next season of Index would be the darkest one yet. And I believe them, but the limps they're willing to go because we're always seeing the good side of Academy City most of the times, and we're seeing how the church sometimes looks evil, but yet it could be good at the same time as well. But seeing this episode, you're seeing both sides at their worst right now. And it's just messed up. Academy City willing to destroy an entire city just to get a document that's yet to be destroyed. A freaking church using the people to further their goals. It's just messed up, man. And all for the sake of themselves. One is using for the freedom of their city. The other one's using it for um, the salvation of God. But at the end of the day, it's just people hiding behind reasons for their wicked deeds. That's all it really is. Okay, man. Um, of course, it's between Tama and Isua as they're fighting Terra. Terra's power was finally discovered. It was Flower. I've seen some religious references with flour, but the one I'm mostly known with is salt. I know there are a lot of references with salt and stuff, but flour is another one I haven't heard for a long time, so him using that as his protection, his, his defense and offense was pretty interesting. So his power only allows him to attack one thing and defend himself against one thing. So no matter how powerful your attack is, if it's just one attack, say if Goku does a Kamehame call at this dude, of course Toma can just block it with his right hand. He can just deflect it because it's just one attack. But however, if it's two attacks, he has to think faster than that. That's when he's at a disadvantage. So if he's attacking someone, it can only be attacked only one person. So that's pretty interesting. The whole entire time, Toma was with um, Isawa, and they were both attacking at the same time, or they were defending each other at the same time. So we couldn't follow up until they were being attacked individually, and we found out what was going on. Because the guy has such a powerful attack and just slice through solid objects, why couldn't he just kill them already when he did hit them? Because, because he cut it. So his power has a withdrawal, like every power does. And like I said, um, it's just like JoJo. Once you find out your user's ability and how it works, you gotta use that information for your advantage. And that's exactly what they did in this situation. And it's been a long time since I've seen Toma's famous right hooks, man. It's been a long time. And usually these things work in two different ways, if I've noticed. One... When you punch the shit out of someone, they'll go through this progress of becoming a at least a little bit more decent person. Or two, they ain't learn jack shit, but they something happens to them at the end of the line. So it's like when you get hit really hard by one of Toma's right hooks, you have only two options in life. Get good or freaking get screwed. That's the only options you have with his right hooks. So that's a very cool ability. It's like a stand ability when you think about it. Okay, I need to stop talking about JoJo. We're talking about Index here. But yeah, um, besides that, there was also some very interesting information of Toma. As we all know, in the first season of Index, Toma lost his memories of his past. But since he's a pretty smart guy, he picked up on things and situations, he put them together so he wouldn't act, you know, weird or different. I have never seen something like this before where a guy with amnesia just slowly start picking up the pieces so he can blend in. It's like, it's like you becoming somebody else, but yet you're becoming them by reading the mood, the people you are with and stuff like that. You wait for them to make a move and you see how they're about and how you're supposed to respond to them. So, like, wow, that was amazing right there. So, the question is, is what is Imagine Breaker? That's the thing I want to know. Like, where did it come from? If Toma is a level zero person, could it be he has something to do with the magical side of things instead of the scientific? And he's just somehow in Academy City for protection, and something in the past must have happened to him. 
but we don't know what it is. So, because after all, Toma lost his memories. I bet he was furthermore got into the church side. The question is, is even though he lost his memories, one could say he's still the same person that he was before. But he has little information of what he's really capable of because of that. So what if he would gain his memories again and he would know everything from his past and he might do some humongous big reveals that would be completely shocking for the fans. But for us anime only watchers, like I said, I I've, I've been tempted to read the index books. I have read the Railgun books and I have read the Accelerator books. Because I didn't know Accelerator was gonna be animated, but it is. So I have to stop right there. I want to be surprised like I was with high school DXD. So yes, man. It's just wow. Knowing that we also got a freaking accelerator scene, man. Fucking accelerator. And I love how he would use him being a jerk as an excuse of doing the right thing. As you all know, Akami City was really to just, just destroy the whole entire place. But Accelerator, like, no, real villains only attack those do not get the irrelevant in their way. You know, they don't go throughout their way tarnishing everybody's life. Because that's something a thug would do. A real villain has one goal and they'll shoot like an arrow or a spear. So him doing that, I get like a jerk at the same time only shows what a good person he is. And especially how he just went down and just burned Kara up and just like he's giving them some time in order to escape. But he's still doing it in a jerky kind of way. He is, truly is one of the best anti-heroes in anime and light novels. He's just good. Just really good. However, Terra survives the attack because like I said, no matter how powerful the attack is, it will not affect him because it's just one attack. If it was two attacks, that's different. But no one, he accelerated know that, so he got away. But like I said, he got hit by Toa's right hook and because of that, he died at the end by Aqua. The, the rear seat, in a way. So what is the goal of these people? They wish to get the seat of God, the right hands, the right seat of God, in order to become above God. They want to turn to angels. Now that the original sin was taken away, and they have these great powers, they wish to excel even more. You know, human beings always crave um, curiosity, knowledge, and power. So because of that, they want to excel to even becoming angels. Probably even, and of course, more than angels. The question is, is that really their true goal? We have to see later on and find that out. So, so far, um, Bento and Terra has been knocked out of the goal. Um, and that one was when and the other one was Earth. So next is Aqua. The question is, who's the fire dude, you know, and what their name is going to be? I'm very interested, like I said, like, this episode really got me like, wow, that kind of got, it raised me some questions I forgot about, like, where did Imagine Baker came from? Who was Tama in that question? Who was Tama before he lost his memories, really? What was going on with him? And then speaking of that, of Tama, um, Mikasa, freaking Mikisa, <laughs> I'm saying her name right now, she found out through the phone call. Remember, the phone wasn't destroyed or anything, or he didn't hang up. So the whole entire time, she was listening to the conversation that was going on, probably even the fight. So she knows that he had amnesia the whole entire time. And... Like I said, um, a lot of people on the internet, especially me, like, Toma gotta pick one girl out of his harem. One girl. And a lot of people said, it could be Mikasa. Sure, she's um, a bit younger than him, but it's just Japan and everything. So who knows that? Or Isua. Isua is also the most useful girl by his side than any others. You know, she doesn't hit him or anything like that. So that would be nice to have someone like her. Um, her on his side all the time, but this is not about the shipping. This is more about Misaka's feelings of what's going on with Toma. She hates that she can't help him. Toma is always helping her all the time and being there for her, but she can barely sometimes be there for him. And seeing how she has a total crush for this guy, she hates that. You know, she's supposed to be the one of the top experts in the city. But yet, she can't help out this one guy that much like she wants to. It really hurts her on the inside. So I say, I feel for you, girl. I really do. You know, and I hope you'll find some way to help him. And you probably will down the road, you know, because you're one of the head girls of his harem. So there's no way in hell you're not going to have a very important role later on down the line. So hearts go out to Misika, you know. Hope, I like to see the conversation that happens, though, when 
the two meet and she confronts him. Will she confront him about it? Or will she like pretend it didn't happen but worries about it until later on? That's what I want to see, you know, that good old romance. I know it's about shipping and romance and anime that people go crazy for, but something, something. But anyways, so that's all I got for this video. I hope you guys are enjoying Index as much as I am. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, rate, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you get updated every time I upload. This has been American Anime, and I'm signing out. Have a good one.